<laughs> well, up there, there's half a field up there. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here with a mega K11 Micro update for you today. Dad has been working really hard on the car and I've actually been at work. So dad has been tinkering and, well, I say tinkering, working hard on the Micro, getting it rust of already for the past two weeks whilst I've been at work, which has meant that sadly we haven't been able to film all the process of what he's been doing because he's been cracking on. However, I want to let you know what he's been up to in this mega micro update then. We'll speak to Dad, find out what he's done. I'm expecting it to be finished. Aha, good afternoon. I thought I would catch you in the garage with, uh, with the Project Micro. How are you? Very good, thank you. Uh, you've been a busy old bee. Keep nipping out and doing a little bit. So I've been at work the past couple of weeks to pay for Project Micro. Uh, last time we spoke to you, we'd been to the scrapyard and we'd got a donor throttle body, yep. MAF sensor and idle control valve. Yes. So the car is now running fine mechanically, which meant that you could obviously crack on with other jobs. Talk us through bit by bit what you've been doing then. I fitted the uh, idle control valve. Yes. And now she controls her idle nicely. Show us it again. Show us it running. A little bit fast at the minute because it's on choke. Aha! It lives. So all the messing about we did with petrol and fuel tanks and red X. Did you have to clean the injectors? I haven't cleaned the injectors, no. Are you considering that? No, not at the moment. Because it's working okay at the moment, yeah? So, idle control valve fitted, just an update there, uh, and it's running nicely. So that's meant that we can now work on other stuff. Yes. Do you want to turn it off? <laughs> Save all that petrol I've salvaged. Have you hit in your lawnmower? Uh, I haven't used it in my lawnmower yet, no, but that's the plan. So you fitted the idle control valve, what was the next port of call? Oh, mate, I've done that much blinking stuff. What do you want to talk about the filler neck? Uh, no, we'll talk about that. Well, yeah, actually, we will talk about the f fuel filler neck. So, um, where's it gone? I've put it on the bench. So, in the last video, when we were messing about with the fuel tank, um, we noticed that the fuel filler neck was posh rotten. Just show us that there. It's a blooming mess, isn't it? It is a mess, isn't it? So that's, oh, blimey, I'm tripping over the tripod. Uh, so that is the original fuel filler neck from yep. the car, isn't it? It's the genuine Nissan it's part. About to go, it's about to get an old wheel. So let's just, take, let's just have a look there. Uh-oh, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a big old hole in there. What has caused, oh. Go on then. There's low, <laughs> well, up there, there's half a field up there. Wow. The new one hasn't got the little flap in either. Uh, the what, sorry? The replacement one hasn't got the little flap there. What, like the anti-siphon flap? Well, that little flap there hasn't got one in anyway. Oh. That's to stop you from siphoning it off, isn't it? Anyway, so um, we, we identified that the fuel filler neck and was, was no good. It's not very good. No. So we fitted a Slight new one. Slight corrosion. <laughs> Slight corrosion. So you have fitted now um, a new one, yep. which looks looks good in there. That's the original uh, fuel cap, right? No, it, it is, yeah, because it supplies you with a new one, but the little fitting doesn't fit there. So I've put I've left the original one on, and it does seem to fasten down all right. The new one fit. So we'll have to see how you get on. I did put some Vaseline on there to see if it bottoms out, and it does. So let's have a look in there. So we haven't got... A little flap. Oh, that's annoying, isn't well, it? Well, it's because it's cheap eBay stuff, isn't yes. it? Yes. So that's cost 40 quid. How was fitting that? It was bloody horrible. Show us what you've had to do. Well, the top bracket, apart from the fact it was rotted off anyway... Yep. I've put it on in a different place and there's a bolt through from the inside now. Okay, the, so, so that's I'd, up in so there. So I take all the carpet out the back oh. and put a bolt through from the inside. Yep. And the bottom so it fits one, in this channel, doesn't it? Or in this cover? Yeah, that cover's on it now. And the bottom yeah. one, the bottom mounting, 
was about that far out of line. If oh. You, if, you bolted it that up, oh. if you bolted it up, the blinking filler neck, this side was out here and that side was well past the seal. Oh, that's no good. It didn't fit very well at all. Well, you get what you pay for, don't you, for 50 so with quid. A bit, with a bit of fettling, it's acceptable now. So I couldn't buy a genuine OEM one. They just didn't seem to exist. They probably don't exist now, mate. Um, right. I could have bought a second-hand OEM one yeah. from a donor car, but it's probably going to be as corroded as the other one, There's isn't ever it? ever so much mud up there that was above there. I wonder how it's all got in there, then. It just sits up there, doesn't it? Behind that bracket. So when I'd done that, I did wax oil the new thing. Yep. And then put the cover back on. And how long did that take? Well, it should have been... A half hour job, and I reckon I was three or four hours. Because you had to modify it? I was fiddling about, and I had to take all the gubbins out the back to put a bolt through from inside. So you don't really want to have to do that again? Not what I have to do, are <laughs> <laughs> Right, so that's the fuel filler neck, and now I've got the light on in here, I will show <coughs> it properly. Oh, that does feel tight in there, doesn't it? Yeah. There it is. If you don't like it, you can put another one on. <laughs> but there it is in there, good. Right, so that's one job jobbed. Um, so it's cost us 50 quid so far. Yep. What's next? What did you do after that? Not a lot, have I? I think you've done lots. You've done an oil and filter change. Oh, I changed the sump, didn't I? <laughs> and you've put a new sump on it. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the sump that you've removed. Yeah, I changed the sump. Okay, so you've got the old sump off now, and now it's time to have a look what's inside it. Let's take a look in there. Tell us what you've found. Loads of blooming hard baked blooming combustion byproducts oh, yeah. and oil. The big lumps of that those. So there's all that and in the sump. Da, 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 da. Where's it gone? The core plug. Oh. That was rattling around in the bottom. Core plug? Yeah. Uh, how has that got in the bottom of a sump? Don't know. <laughs> was it stuck to the bottom or was it just loose? Just rolling around in the bottom. Oh, fair enough. It's in there. But the, uh, there was no money. No, no cash in there. No. There's obviously the old sump then. Um, no drugs. No drugs in there. There's all the combustion byproducts and stuff that you can see in it's there. Like sludge. Like stuff. Would that have made a difference to the way that the engine is run or no because the oil filter pickup was clean well there you go yeah we're not wasting our time though. <laughs> can i get rid of that now i'm bored of looking at that mucky old sump what the sump what are you going to do with it are you oh, going to have it as recycle it pistons the podcasts no i'm fed up for saving we're going to see how much it's leaking look yeah blimey they all do it don't they it's just rotted through, hasn't it? Is that the original one? Yeah. Yeah. Jolly Fair well is, mate. Good. Go on, give her a whack, see how bad it is. Yeah, it's just gone. It's just gone rusty, oh, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Has it gone through? Yeah. Well. No holes, though. Yeah, well, there's enough for a world to get through, isn't there? Enough for the oil to seep through. Anyway, it's all mended now. Jobs are good. Jobs are good fish. And you got what you got there? Ah, oh, the genuine Nissan oil filter. That's not the original, I'm assuming. We've not put an original I one on. I think your dad fitted that, wouldn't you? I'm thinking you probably put that on from the garage. I think your dad fitted that the whole mate load. Right, well, I've got angry with the fluorescent light in the garage and pushed the car outside because uh, it was causing me drama and we couldn't see properly. So, um, you fitted a new sump. Yes, mate. Why did you have to fit a it, new sump? It had corroded through. Unbelievable. Um, the sump that was on it that you removed, the original one? Yeah, oh, I should think so, mate, yeah. Yeah, and uh, as we saw in that little clip, there was loads of sort of black stuff inside the sump, wasn't there? Um, oh yeah, there was all that dried combustion deposits and stuff. It was stuff, really wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, stuff, rubbish, dried oil and muck, and and the car actually sounds better now. Yeah. So new sump on, big job. No, 
Could have been horrendous if the flange bolts hadn't come out and I couldn't get the front pipe off. We had a sump in stock that uh, I'd got, I don't know, five or six years ago. Uh, no, but longer than that, wasn't it? Ten years ago. Um, yeah. And so you fitted that to the car and you've done an oil and filter change. So filter on the car, what's that, five or six quid. Um, and then oil that we had in stock, 1040 you've put in. Yes, mate. Uh, and that was one job jobbed. Have you also done a coolant flush? Yes, mate. I drained, drained her off and I've put new coolant in, but we're going to put a new expansion tank on today. Oh, yeah, we are. Um, so the expansion tank is, well, it's got a problem. And that problem is that these sort of, I don't know, what, what is it, plastic? It's just dried up. It, it just goes wrong, doesn't it? So I've got a new one of them to fit. Um, a kind viewer did send me Excellent. Uh, a, a bottle. However, sadly, it was for a K12 and not a K11. So we're having to, I've had to buy another one. Um, it's cost me a tenner, but thank you very much for the thought because it was there, uh, but wasn't sadly the right thing. So um, that's a job that I've got to do. It is. Um, have you drained the coolant and put new coolant in it? I have some, yeah. And what was the old coolant like? Well, it was non-existent, was it, actually, because we just put water in yeah, it? Yeah, there was quite a bit in still. Yeah? Yeah. Does it take oat coolant? No. What does it take? Green stuff. Green coolant? Yeah, green coolant. Okay. Um, so coolant flush, done and dusted. What else have you been up to? Took that bit off the wiper arm. Oh, yeah, so we've got, the, uh, we've got a problem with the rear wiper arm. I was cleaning the rear of the car for Pistons, the podcast and uh, well the wiper arm just sort of fell off uh, let's have a look at that as you can see it's sort of cracked um, this is plastic that's cracked but held the other side is well this sort of metal collet thing which is which had expanded uh, in the hole over time and caused it to crack. Is that right? Yes, mate. That's the usual thing. They stick on. But I used the nut splitter. We did. We used Tool of the Week nut splitter um, to get that off there. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen the picture on Twitter the other day. And it went okay. Absolutely wonderful. And I've refurbished the wiper blade. Oh, let's have a look at that. Because I haven't bought a new wiper blade. Not yet, me. no, but I so I don't need to now. I've How? refurbished it. Talk us through the refurbishing process. I've just got an old wiper blade and put a bit of rubber in it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've ordered a brand new rear wiper arm. Uh, could you fix that, do you think? Is that something you could fix? No. Because this is two pieces, is it? It's... Hopefully, does a new one come with that? Comes with all this, comes with all that, yeah, it's a whole, whole shebang. I don't break that because it might not come with that. Okay, fair enough. So anyway, the new wiper arm is a genuine part. Is it? it is a genuine Nissan old stock. It's cost 40 English pounds. Serious? Yeah, 40 quid uh, with delivery. Oh, um, my giddy hand. And that was the cheapest way of doing it. The others were just sort of metal armed as opposed to the plastic armed uh, that I could get. Okay. And even then, we're still 25 quid. I did go to the scrapyard to have a look at the one on the scrap, scrap micro, and guess what? It was broken. It was broken, uh, exactly like the one there. So, new rear wiper arm. Hey, we could do like a rear wiper arm delete. Yeah, you can buy the grommet on eBay for it. Kill all wipers yeah. on there. <laughs> you can buy the grommet for doing it on eBay. Oh, really? Mm. No, um, it's handy to have, and I like having a rear wiper. Uh, right, what else have we been up to then? You've identified a problem oh, with the yeah. tyres. Yeah, that tyre's got a flat on it, that one has. Talk to us about it's this tyre. It's got a big flat spot on it. It's about... 10 mil out around it is. Right, so it needs a new tyre on there, yep, doesn't it? 100 percent certain. Uh, because that is no good. It's buggered. What else have you been up to? Just stood looking at it really. Brakes have all been serviced up. Oh yeah, you so you stripped all the brakes. Stripped all the brakes, eased the discs all the off, brakes. Cleaned the discs up, put them back on. Cleaned the rear brakes out, changed the brake fluid, checked all the hoses and stuff. Check the springs, check the suspension, but generally checked it over. So now all we're waiting for, son, is a rear wiper arm, yeah. some tyres, yeah. and an expansion tank to be fitted. Can I address the elephant in the room? It was posh rotten at the back. We found two massive great well, big holes in the wheel arches. Well, well, tell us about that. What have you done? Oh, 
quite ages ago. <laughs> yeah. I've patched it. You've back. welded it up. Hooray. I've patched um, it at the back here. We had a chat, didn't we, on the old Pistons, the podcast, about it. how we found two massive great big rust holes yeah. in the back there, which wasn't uh, structural, was it? It was more cosmetic or practical. Can I actually get in there and see it? Yeah. Let's have a look what you've done in there. Oh, can I actually see it in there? Da, 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 da. Yes. Ignore all this rust here. <laughs> Ignore all the wheel arch rust. Um, but Dad has fabricated a panel in there and ground it all back and welded it in and sort of protected it up. Yeah. Uh, you didn't want to do that job. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. But um, what, what it happened? It really needs some wheel arches fitted. Well, and the wheel arch panel has half that panel in it. If I remember rightly, you were actually welding this on your birthday. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I know how to have a good time. No. So you've, you've welded it up yeah. is the... Oh, um, I've got some really terrible news for you. What's that? Your new grey mud flaps won't fit. Why not? because they're a different profile and the paint's marked where they live. So the wheel arches have been welded? Well, no, the back end there. Yes, the back end there. Under the lights there. Yep. How much of a pig of a job was that? It wasn't that bad, actually, once oh. I'd made the panel. So you was being a drama queen, basically. <laughs> How long did it take? A day. Yeah. And are you happy with the... The it outcome. is what it is. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. not concourse. It's not pretty, but it's but it's solved the problem. It's, it's yeah. fixed the hole. It certainly has. Okay, I understand. There's three buzzards above us. Aye. Look at that. You can't, probably can't see them, but there's three buzzards shouting Doing about. Buzzard stuff. In the old video. Right, so welding done. Are you happy that no more welding needs to be done for an MOT? Next year, it's going to want them sills doing, I think. The wheel arches and sills? Yeah. Mm. As you know, I tapped it and poked it and it's all right at the minute, but... Uh, so will you be... It's not would, going to get any better, is it? Would you be comfortable fitting wheel arches and sills and then we getting it painted? Yeah, of course I would. Yeah. So that's a, that's a future job. Uh, and we'll put it in the but future it needs, content. It doesn't, it doesn't need sills. They're brilliant until you get to here. So it just needs... What does it need it then? It needs part panelling. So it, it'd be a shame to go right up here because this is good. Yeah. And the step's good. You'd be mad to chop about with that. Okay. Well, we can we can cross that bridge when we need it to, can't part we? Panelling, definitely. And we'll add that again into future content. She needs that bit doing. Yeah. I'm. I'm I bet you could find some panels to do that. You can, but are they any good? But then are they any good? Uh, in fact, the company I've looked at that sell the panels for this mm. appear to be the same company that sells the panels for, you know what, the Rover 75. The Polish one. Yes. Yeah. So, are you saying we fabricate our I, own wheel No, arches? I bet you'll... No, I couldn't do that, mate. I bet there's somebody in this country supplying them. Anyway, uh, so that's, a f that's future content then. We're going to be fitting new wheel arches, but not before Rustival, right? No. <laughs> um, what else have you been up to then? You've looked at the mud flaps, so I've bought some grey mud flaps. Yeah, and they're nothing like the same shape as them. Oh. So we're not fitting the mud flaps? No, we're not. Um, I'm guessing the old mud flaps have sort of marked the paint. Certainly have. Mm. So, so we've got two options now. We can put black mud flaps on the back or find some genuine proper front grain Nissan mud flaps. Right, I'll leave it with you. <laughs> if not, we'll leave it as it is, eh? Good um, idea, Grolich. But it's not the end of the world. But that's a shame we can't get matching colour mud flaps. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've got the part number for matching grey Nissan micro mud flaps. Um, what else have you been up to? That's it. Is it? Yes. It's all done. So, so just, to, to, just to tick it off, uh, new fuel filler neck. Yes. Tick. Throttle body and MAF sensor and idle control valve. Tick. Tick. 
Oil change. Yes. Oil filter. Yep. New sump. Yes. Coolant change and flush. Yes. Uh, all the brakes stripped. Yep. Eased and serviced. Yep. Pads and discs look okay. In the ideal world, you'd fit new ones, but I've cleaned them up. Okay. But they're, they're in the future, it might need some new pads and discs. Yes, uh, if you're going to fit pads or fit discs. Yeah. Uh, welding has been done. That's the main yeah, update, isn't it? The welding has been done and it is not going to the scrapyard. No. Um, we need a new tyre, so that's been diagnosed. Anything else you can yeah, think of? I'm going to say you put two tyres on it, so you've got a matching pair on the front. Yeah, that would make sense. Because that one's quite worn anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you're going to get them tr uh, tricky rims sorted at the same time then, because they'll clean yeah. them up and put clean some meat seal on. I am going to fit a new coolant uh, new expansion tank. And I'm going to offer advice. You're going to watch. And ask, then that's it. Can I ask stupid questions? Yes, you can hold the camera. <laughs> Good. Put it on a tripod, mate. You don't want me holding it. <laughs> <laughs> so new uh, expansion tank is coming. Uh, that's cost a tenner. And then I'm guessing it's MOT ready. No, tyres. Yeah, once we've got the tyres on it. Yeah. Well, that's a good update. Have you enjoyed the process so far? I'd be happier if we'd got a brand new body shell. If I can strip one of your museum micros yeah. and have the body shell repainted in the right colour, then but, I can rebuild it. But then it wouldn't be my car, would it? Um, no, it wouldn't, would it? It would be... You might as well just chop the VIN number out and put it on a good car. <laughs> right, let me put this uh, new expansion tank on then. Yeah. And then we'll uh, have a chat about other stuff. Okay, so first port of call in replacing the coolant expansion tank is to remove the battery. Uh, <laughs> Get that out of the way we can see what we're doing and then it might be that we have to take this breather hose off or it might just slip underneath for the sake of a couple of screws to take this off it makes absolute sense and don't forget this is the battery that i've uh, borrowed from the museum micro so i don't really want to damage that in any way off comes the battery holder and out comes the battery and now you can see the lovely battery carrier that Dad has also lovingly refurbished. So now I've been able to actually assess the situation and have a look, I can see that this is held in place by a screw that's underneath here. So you've got to take that off to get that off, but, well, actually, I'm just going to leave this in place because this is held together just by two bolts. One. Two. And then, well, in theory, it should just lift out. Ta-da! So, as you can see, it's out. I need to just disconnect the pipe that runs to it. And one of the last things I want to do is to get antifreeze everywhere. So I'm just going to tip that out into a bucket. There you go. Now we can make sure we dispose of that properly. The easy empty expansion tank. Now to get this clip off and get the pipe off. Off. There. Now you can see the old knackered one. I'm going to throw it in the bin, apart from that cap. And here's the replacement. Someone has handily coloured in Min and Max and labelled it up for a K11 Micra. It is a genuine part. It was 10 quid and you can see that it is. Well, I'm probably going to be doing this job again in the next couple of years with this one. Thankfully, it's only a five minute job, but I wanted a genuine part on the car as opposed to a replica. Uh, it was the same price. Uh, hopefully there's a bit more life in this one. Well, there certainly is because it's not a hole in it, but in an ideal world, that would have been brand new. And fitting it back on the car is obviously going to be the exact opposite. Uh, where's my clip gone? I thought I'd lost my clip then. Pop my clip on my pipe. Pop my pipe on the bottle. And away we go. In goes the expansion tank. Thankfully they align and it is the right thing. making sure I'm not trapping that pipe as I'm fitting it back in. Well, for those of you that say I don't do the spannering, 
I have managed to replace an expansion tank this afternoon. I mean, it's two bolts and a pipe, but mechanic of the week. Job done. Now to put the battery back on. Make sure your battery isn't going anywhere. Make sure it's nice and tight, which it is. Battery on. Last but not least, fill it back up. Use your funnel so you don't slosh coolant everywhere. And as I said, handily, someone's written min and max on there. In it goes. Just gonna check the radiator again to make sure it's not all disappeared. And actually it's full. So no more needed. Which is also good news because it means we've not got a leak. Well, there it is then, the last of the jobs done on the K11 Micra for today, which is that new expansion tank. And I feel like apprentice of the week after doing that. I feel like I've achieved something. It sounds silly, doesn't it? But I'm quite happy that we've done that. Dad's been really busy then and a mammoth update with the K11 Micra. I suppose the main takeaway is, well, it's ready to rumble nearly and it's not got holes in dad has done all the welding that he said he wasn't going to do clearly he's got bored and done it the micra lives again it idles properly it's had a brand new sump and oil change the coolant has been replaced uh it's had a new fuel fill in there because you can see that one was no good that's not a waste of time as we would say to quote the coupon catchphrase and the brakes have all been tested apart from putting new tires on it I think it's MOT ready. It's gonna need a good detail and it's far from perfect for what I wanna be, but actually, are we going to make Rustival in it? Maybe. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up please. If you haven't already done so, let us know in the comments down below. What do you reckon uh, to the K11 Micro Progress? I'm sorry that I couldn't show you everything, but hopefully this mega update has um, whet your appetite for things to come 200 quid it's cost so far if you're totting it all up dad's happy about that because it's not him paying for it it's me uh, in labor however well it would have been an uneconomical repair so far wouldn't it so it's a good job that we're doing this ourselves if you've enjoyed the video thumbs up please if you haven't already commented let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next and if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so for not only content on the k11 micro but we've got some proton stuff coming soon some audi stuff coming soon and we're heading to the festival of the unexceptional so there will be some show content as well over six thousand of you now in the coupland club so thanks for that uh, subscribe if you can to stay up to date till next time have a great day whatever you're getting up to Goodbye. As ever, thank you for watching this video. Dad and I have selected a couple more videos for you that we think that you might like. They're here now. Just give them a click to watch them. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. It means a lot to us. Thank you.